Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Let's make some powder. So we're going to do some beetle drawings. Um, just a second, get all this set up. And my reference pictures. Today we are going to be using um, Copic markers, uh, my favorite markers on the market. They are excellent and I'm also going to use some um, sorry, I'm not really together. I'm still half asleep this morning. <laughs> We're going to use a couple of colored pencils. Uh, just for the last little bit of details, with an eraser, and for the white highlights on these various creatures, we will be using pop out the chat. Okay, so I've got the chat popped on. I think we're good to go. If anybody has any questions, there is a chat box. You can ask any questions you may have, I'll be happy to answer them. And here we go. Showing a decent ray. Let me get started.
for these beetles, I like to do uh, one section of the body at a time, whether it's the head or the thorax, um, rather than just doing a bunch. When I do uh, images of people, I tend to do like a whole area, like any area that's flesh color will all be done at the same time. But for these little guys, since I'm still kind of learning about them, I need to do it a little bit at a time. Focus on the details. As you can see, I'm layering up lots of different colors with my Copix here. Um, Copics are great. I mean, if you are thinking about using illustration markers, there are a lot of different ones on the market. Um, more every day, new companies are coming out. Everybody's legs are different, but I prefer these bad boys. The most uh, natural feel I've found so far being close to watercolor or painting, which some of you may know is my degree in my area of study for many years was painting, print making. I will kind of still wait until the end to uh, add on the highlights. That's just my personal favorite thing. I, I save them till the very end because they are the best part. If you have any questions about the playlist, it is the playlist that my friend sent me. If you would like to have access to that on Spotify, you just find me and follow me. nice thing about these uh, markers as well is they're alcohol based in case you don't you know, have any experience with them. Makes blending very interesting. Some put a lot of color in a dark color and it will still um, come up. It's almost like adding water to water color and letting it join out. It's complicated. As much as I originally loved the idea of doing all these beetles, and all their different shapes and sizes, um, originally when I chose them, I was like, oh man, this is really pretty. And now I'm like, wow, that's a lot of detail on that shell that I'm going to have to sit there and um, <laughs> try and finish and get it all worked up. It'll be worth it. I've actually finished about eight of these different ones so far.
something that's cool is I'm breaking out of the usual palette of colors that I choose uh, for my Copics because when you draw people the majority of the time you have a kind of set palette that you use lots of natural fresh things it turns out these beetles are all different colors so you need these different types of beetles is that I sort of have this tendency to generalize things. Like a bug is a bug is a bug. So that's how this idea came about. It's kind of a meta As you can see, the uh, brush tip on this marker is really great for fine lines. And if you have abused your marker a bit, you can replace the nib quite easily. One thing about these beetles, um, they have this pattern in their shell that reminds me of like peg wall. So I left this white because it's harder to go white after you've had color on there. And then I'm going to have to kind of manually go in.
this is a good example. This mud is super duper wet. And it wants to leak everywhere. Which could be a disaster if you're doing a very small detail and it goes whoop, and drops a big dog on there. So. I literally just do this. It's actually not even, I mean, it's my fault. Don't think that it's democrat. It's definitely me. I overfilled it um, before a convention. I was being lazy and not wanting to test each individual marker. So I just refilled all of them. And then I was like, oh man. And started dripping everywhere. These particular markers are, um, this brand is in pretty high demand right now, so um, I have several friends who are trying to put in orders for refills and things. Um, I mean, it takes a while to get them. The reason currently is that the d uh, demand for these is outpacing their production by a quite a big margin. So. Be prepared for that to happen. The little guys coming along. So after I've kind of gotten the meat of the drawing in, um, I'm sure you can see I didn't really go the traditional route, which is pencil, then ink, uh, and then marker. I actually will color it first and then do any outlines or things like that that need to be done. So I'm going to go in like this and just add any dark areas that I want. the sort of uh, flat outline that uh, some people prefer. So I actually accidentally made that too flat, but I'm going to fix that when I'm going with my right in a few minutes. A little more texture here to his show. Actually, this could be a female, probably. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, so now that I have the base down, it's time to go in and add the smaller details, which are fantastic to do. Uh, they can be a little frustrating because you have to be patient. 
And it's very small movements of your hands so that can actually hurt your wrist. If you're not careful, it breaks. First, I give him some little highlights in his eyeballs. Because they're adorable. And then, I'm going to add some texture here. I am actually using a virtual reference, so you just can't see it. Just the photo that I've saved to my computer. It's on my computer screen. It comes to these smaller textured areas that have little bitty spots, it's easier to add those after the fact than to try and leave them white whenever you're coloring with marker. Okay. I'm going to go into his I know this looks kind of productive because I just added some darker color, but it just creates a lovely texture, a layering of um, the white, the puppy color, and then I'm going to go up and add some highlights in his little tummy. I keep saying he's okay. These are what you just sort of used to smooth. If you need a little bit of a highlight and you don't want it to be super duper um, defined, I think there's a nice rough texture to add. It makes it less dramatic. Most natural highlight.
The other nice thing about these markers is that they're very transparent. It's like water color. It's very similar um, to watercolor. I tell people that a lot. How did you know to draw with these? Well, it's very similar to watercolor. Well, how can I learn that? Well, you should practice with watercolor. I don't want to do that. Okay, well then I guess you're not going to learn how to use these. I first started using these uh, markers. A lot of people were telling me I was doing it wrong. Just because the you know, traditional way of doing comics is to pencil, ink, and then color. But I was not trained in that particular way. I was a painter. So I approach everything with the same sensibilities that I would use with paint. And just goes to show you there's not really one way to do anything. So gotta do what's right for you. Tutorials are great. I mean you can find ways to do things that you never thought of and then kind of change it to your way of doing. Yeah, I'm just realizing as I forgot to go on the edges of the other one. I was starting to talking about what I was doing. Okay. Just really quick. So we've added the light. I'll go in on the edges. Like right here. Where I had this one that was just like a little too fat.
good example of what I was saying about the floor. The jelly roll is a very bright, defined green for the brightest of the highlight. And I'm going with a pencil to kind of soften it up a little bit. You can also smear green. You can smear the jelly roll a little bit, but it's kind of unpredictable. It has a lovely effect. I just try and be a little more... I guess I feel a little nervous doing it on camera, so... I'm gonna make sure I do it right. Now on this one, I'm actually going to use my black pencil as well. Um, I'm not going to go this second. I'm gonna, I just noticed something that I want to do. So. for the tiny, tiny little details, like the ends of these little claws or feet. They're very spiky. They have lots of little jagged areas, which you can do with a marker, but it's a little more difficult. Also, this the black pen, because I'm not using a black marker, is going to be the darkest um, spot. So you can go through and kind of
Alright, so now that I have most of this down, I'm actually going to go around the edges here and create some shapes. Uh, a lot of things get sort of muddled once you get the marker down. So like these little bitty areas here can really make them look um, really pop. Just kind of shaping the outside. Now obviously this would be harder to do if I was using tinted paper. But because this paper is a lovely creamy color, I can use my jelly roll to shave down the edges. Tighten it up a little bit. Another one done. This is coming along pretty quick. Moving right along. I guess I'm going to step away for just a moment. I'll be right back. Change up the music just a little. Now that I'm in the proper mood.
Everybody's speaking in the past name, surely now I'm Revving through the gears and keep ourselves from stressing now. Your heart and your soul is as sweet as it is. Oops, we're so caught up in the red oil. We suffer for so little. Holding back the tears on the last year home with you It's been twenty-seven years and you only know just figure it out
Alright. Alligator bear coming up, so I think I'm gonna stop here. And thank you so much for coming back and watching later on. Got three lovely beetles done today. We have the green. And we have this lovely little guy. So again, um, thank you so much for coming. If you wanna follow me here on YouTube, I'm gonna start posting more videos. Alright guys, see you next time.